the Xbox 360. A triple core power PC CPU at 3.2 GHz, 512 MB of GDDR3 RAM, a 500 MHz GPU, hard drive, somewhat optional, a nice package that only got better as Microsoft began to fix the console's issues. But of course, a console just doesn't appear out of thin air. Prior to even beta development kits being available to some developers in June 2005, Microsoft had been using Apple Power Mac G5s as a development platform, going as far as to use them at E3 2005. Powered by dual G5 PowerPC 2.0 GHz processors, 512 megs of RAM, and either an ATI Radeon 9800 Pro graphics card for Alpha 1 kits, or an ATI Radeon X800 XT for Alpha 2 kits, the Alpha platform proved to be a fraction of what would be possible on the Xbox 360, but the architecture was similar enough to get the developers started. This Power Mac is configured as an Alpha 2 would have been, with a Xenon software version towards the end of the Alpha 2 timeline. The Xenon launcher is similar to that of the final original Xbox development kit, and would continue to be used until being replaced by the XNA branded launcher during the Xbox 360's lifetime. The options are fairly similar too, you'd have network settings, your display settings, in this case using VGA output, and some account settings which have long since stopped working. Speaking of things that stop working, the system does tend to freeze, so stability wasn't all that high on many of the functions of the kit. On the launcher itself, you have some basic samples, including Dolphin, which has existed nearly as long as the Xbox has, which shows how hardware and software is improving on the platform. I do find it interesting that Microsoft continues to use it, even on their Project Scorpio development tools for the Xbox One. The dashboard is the Blades dashboard that you either love or hate, which I find usually depends on when you jumped into the Xbox 360. Many of the settings are placeholders or otherwise do not work, including the games menu which at first teased me with some demos despite knowing deep down that there is no way these things would actually be on here. Music playback does work. Again, the settings are pretty typical, although there is some humor to be found. What I found most surprising is that there is already an early original Xbox backwards compatibility layer running on the hardware. Sure, it is imperfect, with the frame rate slowing to a crawl, even on Halo, which seems to be the most functional. There's missing effects, and there's sound that leaves a bit to be desired. But the fact that Microsoft managed to get the emulator working this well on Power Mac hardware is extremely surprising to me, and truly was a pleasant surprise. And hey, being that this is so early, the original Xbox Controller S still worked, which was really a nice bonus. Of course, there's more to be said, and there's a lot that, quite frankly, I don't know a whole lot about. So if you want more information about the Xbox 360 Alpha platform, check out XenonWiki.com. As always, I cannot supply download links, but I'm told there should eventually be instructions on how you can make your own Franken-Xenon. That's it for tonight. Do follow on Twitter at Borman18 and subscribe here, because you never know when I might drop something interesting. And until next time, thanks for watching.